Now, the next question is, of course, uh, how does he uh, assemble the staff? Who does he retain? Who does he go after? And also the thought process and the evaluation of those coaches. And that's kind of difficult to do. As you mentioned, Mississippi State not being familiar with him uh, as a fan base. And they're probably not going to be familiar with too many people that he brings in. So what's the current status of coaches retained? Who is he uh, brought in from other places? And uh, are there any other vacancies to be filled? Well, uh, Joe Moorhead's acted pretty quickly in terms of hiring his staff. Yesterday, uh, there was an influx of reports. We hired three, or not officially hired, but it's been reported that we that we hired three coaches yesterday alone. But the first coach that we hired, I mentioned his name earlier, was Charles Huff, who's going to be our co-offensive coordinator and running backs coach. For the last four seasons, he was the running backs coach at Penn State. Now, uh, that obviously means that he's familiar with Joe Moorhead and as running backs coach at Penn State, that means that he coached a player that some people have heard of by the name of Saquon Barkley. Um, and apparently he was Penn State, one of Penn State's best recruiters. So this hire, obviously, Mississippi State's had a tradition under Dan Mullen, under Jackie Sherrill, even under Sylvester Croom, of having really good running backs. And that's what Mississippi State has with the likes of Aries Williams, who was a four-star running back, and Kylan Hill, another four-star. We've got three four-stars on our roster uh, at running back alone, Kylan Hill, Aris Williams, and Nick Gibson. Um, so having a guy like Charles Huff, who's developed a, uh, the likes of Saquon Barkley, who's a very good recruiter, he's someone who Joe Moorhead is familiar with. It's, in my opinion, that is a very, very good start for Joe Moorhead. Another coach that Moorhead is extremely familiar with is Andrew Briner, who was hired as our quarterback's coach and passing game coordinator. He was previously the head coach at Fordham, replacing Joe Moorhead. Um, he was promoted from the offensive coordinator uh, job at Fordham. So obviously, with what Joe Moorhead was able to do at, as the head coach at Fordham, I mentioned the Patriot League, Patriot League championship and a 38-13 and overall record. Obviously, they did that with a very explosive offense, and Andrew Briner was a big part of that. Um, this is sort of a very strategic hire on Joe Moorhead's part, an X's and O's hire. They're very familiar with each other during their time at Fordham. And Andrew Briner has the opportunity to develop uh, not only Nick Fitzgerald, who will be a senior next season, but Keaton Thompson, who is a four-star quarterback uh, out of Louisiana, uh, the number one dual-threat quarterback in that state. And in addition, we've got a four-star quarterback coming in in this class who has reaffirmed his commitment to Mississippi State, even with Dan Mullen's departure, named Jalen Maiden from Texas. Um, so Andrew Briner and Joe Moorhead definitely – uh, they're they're not empty on the shelves in terms of offensive talent, um, and that's a very good hire in terms of just offensive strategy uh, for Andrew Briner and Joe Moorhead. Uh, he's also made some hires that we expected in terms of not all, in terms of uh, having familiar with the familiarity with the Southern United States. Uh, Bob Shoup was hired as our defensive coordinator, which raised some eyebrows. Uh, it's very mixed opinion because people will look at Bob Shoup's last few years at Tennessee and say, wow, this is a terrible hire. Um, their defense is ranked in the very bottom half of the United States in terms of a bunch of defensive statistics. But if you look before that, it's a hire that's very intriguing. He was previously with James Franklin at Vanderbilt and Penn State. And at those two stops, he put together some really good defenses. Um, he led four defenses uh, at Penn State and Vanderbilt that finished in the nation's top 30 in terms of scoring defense. In 2012, Vanderbilt finished 15th, and Penn State in 2014 finished 7th. So it's not like he's a bad coach and has no familiarity with success. Uh, he's obviously had success at different stops. And l l uh, seeing to some U Tennessee fans' reaction and speaking to some Tennessee fans, they say a large part of what of Bob Shoup's struggles as defensive coordinator was due in large part to Tennessee's struggles on offense and the fact that their defense was on the field constantly. Um, that's not only from Tennessee fans, from, but from from some regional writers and from national writers. And it overall, is, I mean, the Butch Jones era at Tennessee was seemingly a dumpster fire. So being put in that situation could be difficult for any defensive coordinator. Um, furthermore, Bob Shoup is returning an extremely talented defense, or not returning, inheriting an extremely talented defense. Montez Sweat and Jeffrey Simmons, two of our defensive linemen, were both first-team All-SEC defensive linemen, uh, the first tandem of uh, defensive linemen on a first-team All-SEC team since Alabama in 2015. 
Um, Montez Sweat is rumored to be going to the NFL draft, but there's a strong possibility that he'll come back for his senior year. And Jeffrey Simmons is a sophomore, is a true sophomore, so he'll most definitely be back. He was a five star out of high school, one of only two five stars that Dan Mullen signed during his time at Mississippi State. And furthermore, we're bringing in Chauncey Rivers, who is already a part of the program. He just had to sit out this past season for academic concerns, but he was a transfer from Georgia, went to East Mississippi Community College, was one of the stars of Last Chance U, if that's anything. Um, um, he was the number one defensive line recruit in the nation in the 2017 junior college class. And we're going to bring him and uh, bringing him in our defense next season. So it's going to be Chauncey Rivers, Montez Sweat, and Jeffrey Simmons, which is going to be an extremely, I mean, that that's, that's arguably one of the, in the top three in the best defensive lines in the conference, bringing those three guys in and Bob Shoup gets to inherit that at defensive coordinator. Uh, we've also had two other hires. One is a pretty big name. Mark Hutzbeth is going to be coming in as our tight ends coach. Uh, he's known as being the head coach at UL Lafayette for the last, I guess, seven seasons. Um, but before that, he was our wide receivers coach under Dan Mullen in his first two years at Mississippi State. So he's obviously familiar familiar with the program and recruiting in the Southern United States. And finally, we hired uh, Marcus Johnson as our offensive line coach, who was Duke's offensive line coach. His name has sort of had some criticism uh, from state fans due to the fact that he went to Ole Miss. I don't really care about that. If he's a rebel, that's fine. As long as he can recruit and help us win football games, that's all that matters as far as I'm concerned. Um, so he'll be coming in as offensive line coach. And uh, from what we have seen from just from pictures of recruits with some of the coaches on Twitter, um, we're, we're – He's been recruiting with uh, guys like Brad Peterson, who is our director of player personnel, and Brian Baker, who's our defensive line coach. Based on that, there's a strong chance that both of those coaches will be retained, but nothing reported or official there. Uh, we're still waiting to see on coaches retained. But uh, so far, he's building a very solid staff in terms of uh, coaches he's familiar with and coaches that uh, are familiar with the self. I understand drawing the line and wanting to maintain those uh, rivalry battle lines, but at the same time, if you would uh, go through the lineage of uh, top coaches, whether that means currently or historically in college football, a lot of people would be surprised to see uh, some of the lines that have been crossed uh, by some legendary coaches and some very successful coaches when it comes to uh, rivalries. So that's nothing to be... Uh, uptight about i don't think uh the the couple things that come to mind uh uh concerning um what you just ran down is that uh obviously college football nation that was watching on that thanksgiving night uh, nick fitzgerald leave the field they got to look at uh thompson uh play some very meaningful snaps and uh we saw the jitters we saw the the uh, marginal play to start, but it seemed as though he gained some confidence and started to play uh, well in the offense uh, down the stretch against Ole Miss, and they almost came back and pulled that one out. And then also in terms of uh, Shoup's performance at Tennessee, I think it also has to be considered that I, I certainly have the same perspective as uh, much of what you said concerning uh, the performance of the offense uh, lending itself to a bad defensive performance, especially this season. Uh, I don't know what the statistics say, for Tennessee, but if you look game to game at the offensive performance, it was just uh, dismal, especially trying to run the football, even with John Kelly, and uh, they gave the defense absolutely no help or support. And then if you go back this season, and then especially in 2016, uh, they had tremendous talent on defense, but it was it was starting to drop uh, from almost game one on, and um, Tennessee's probably suffered more injuries uh, on that side of the football over the last two years than any team in the SEC. So there's something to be considered there uh, concerning Tennessee defensive ranks over the past few seasons under Bob Shoup.